Ready to start? So, hi, I'm Ludwig, working for SUSE in the Future Technologies team. And today our topic is Git Native Packaging. A uh, word of a disclaimer already. What I'm presenting here is mostly ideas and concepts, so it's not something that is actually implemented. So the goal would be to present the ideas and run it through your heads, and then you think about it and maybe talk to me later whether it's actually doable in practice. But first, let's take a look what app packaging actually means at distribution level. So our job as a distribution is to take upstream software source code and turn it into binaries that we deliver to our users. And usually there is no one-to-one -one relationship between a package, uh, an, an upstream source, and a packager. So one packager usually takes care of multiple packages, like hundreds or even thousands at the same time. And there are maintainers, packages that don't even have packages on their own, but rather work horizontally. So they um, apply distribution-wide changes across a wide range of packages that they don't even own. And in order to make a round shape distribution, so to say, our job is to integrate software so it works together. So we have to apply downstream changes sometimes. Especially when we're talking about stable distributions where people have to backport security fixes, for example, to old versions of software. And a distribution like Tumbleweed consists of like 10,000 packages. So whatever we do in packaging needs to be highly scalable. Especially also in maintenance, the maintenance engineers or security engineers may not be familiar with the package, so a very valuable asset is that they can touch any package without in-depth knowledge. So how do we do that? One of the secret sources is the concept of pristine sources. That concept even predates RPM. So the idea is that you take the unmodified upstream sources and then add your changes as patches. So for example, one bug fix, one patch, or every feature is a separate patch. And we combine that with a build description file, in our case, spec files for RPM. And that spec file is readable by the machine, so the machine can actually take it, process it, and execute what's in there. But it's also human readable, so anyone can basically take any package in factory and know how to apply changes there. So example that probably everyone knows, here's a spec file, uh, for example package, like assume it's Hello World, it's version 1.0, it's pretty obvious that this is the case. We declare the upstream sources, a tarball, and we somehow have to patch it, so pretty easy. The rest is RPM specific, but even if you're not a packager, you probably understand that this thing is doing something with the sources. It's calling configure and make, installs the software, and then has a list of files that are part of this package. So it's pretty easy if you need to add another change, you just add another patch, and you can submit the package. Now, this concept with pristine sources and tarballs is, I don't know how many, how many decades old, so back in the days, software was uploaded to FTP servers, and then you download the tarball, so this method is basically brilliant. But nowadays, I mean, developers don't really work with tarballs anymore, right? So it's kind of annoying, and we all know that Git has conquered the world. So, what does that mean for distribution? Let's take a look, for example, at Ring Zero. So in last year, end of last year, I took a look at Ring Zero, which is the bootstrappable core of OpenSUSE Factory, and took a look what upstream revision control systems were used in there. So and as you can see, the vast majority is actually Git. So most projects use, use Git. There's 10, that is mostly our own software that just stores the sources directly in OBS, but could be put into Git, of course. There's eight that actually still use tarballs, and two each for some old version control systems, and one, yeah, also very weird ones. So clearly, Git is the authoritative source of upstream software nowadays. So the next question would be, could we use Git directly, maybe, instead of this going through tarballs and applying patches manually? 
So the idea would be to use no tarballs and no patches, but instead um, apply git commits. We also may want to have the spec file in git because having this separate um, makes it harder to build the package because you always have to copy this here, copy there. Then the spec file maybe doesn't match the exact source version. So it's actually desirable to have the spec file also next to the real upstream sources. But at the same time, we need to retain the scalability that we have with this pristine sources concept that we knew before. So we want to be able that any packager can take any package and know how it works, apply patches and submit them without digging into the specifics of this specific piece of software. I mean, the answer to this question is obviously yes, in my opinion, so it's kind of rhetoric. But before I explain how I think it could be done, let's take a look at how Git works internally. So Git actually doesn't store patches or diffs. So the idea that a commit is a diff is actually not true. What Git really stores is blobs, so the actual file content. And the blobs are connected via trees. The tree is basically a directory listing, gives the blob a name. And in order to have a timeline, we have commit, that has the author, date, and some text. And that commit in turn uh, refers to a, a tree at that point in time. Trees have obviously subdirectories or other uh, blobs. Yeah. So when we look at some piece of upstream software, for example, the Hello World program before, it could look like this in Git. So it would be some initial state and then upstream applied some change and tagged it as version 1.0. Meanwhile, the main branch continued and they applied more fixes. So when we want to package that from Git, we would probably go ahead and just take um, the version one, create a branch for OpenSUSE, then we add our spec file and another patch on top, maybe. You may wonder, can you actually build this directly from Git? Uh, yes, you can. So actually with RPM build, uh, there's an option to build in place and not call prep anymore. So there is no reason to just put this in a tarball and, and do this dance with copying this back and forth. So you can build this right from source. Uh, even the build script in OpenSUSE supports this in-place building meanwhile. Anyway, all looks nice until the point where there's a package update or the upstream releases a new version. So now what do you do? You need to get the package for the new version. So the naive approach would be you just merge the upstream new version, right? Still builds. But the disadvantage now is that you can't easily see anymore what exactly did we change in this package. So some of those commits that we applied downstream may be merged upstream now. And by the merge, they're, they're still in the history, but you don't know whether they're still valid or not. And it gets even worse when time progresses and upstream releases more versions, you do more merges, and it just gets messy. And it's really hard to, to diff anymore what, what happened there. So the next obvious choice would be to do a rebase. In that case, you just tell Git to treat those differences as patch and apply them to the new version. Now then again, we have a nice linear history. We have individual commits, nice and shiny. However, now the old version has no reference anymore. So Git would garbage collect what we did before and we have no way anymore to go back to the version 1.0 state of our package. So if we wanted to submit that to some stable distribution, for example, our commits would be lost. So somehow re losing commits needs to be prevented. How can we do that? Maybe we can look at OBS, how OBS does that, because it's actually pretty simple and similar to Git. So when you visualize how OBS works nowadays with the means that are used for Git, could, be look, could look like this. So you have a devil project, you do stuff in your devil project. You have a history there. When you submit to factory, there's actually a different history in factory. What a submit request does is, is just com, um, submitting the tree to factory, and then factory links those trees itself. There's no relation anymore to, to the devil project. So now with, with the power of Git, 
we could of course have multiple parents, so it doesn't have to be uh, the history doesn't have to be lost in factory. So now, if you use Git, we could actually create commits in factory that refer both to the version in factory as well as the history in devil project. So at any point in time with this, you could see how it progresses in factory, like linearly, and then also go into the devil project and see how it progressed there. And with a small trick in, in this factory branch in this case, like an empty commit in the beginning, you could even tell git log to follow the first parent, assuming the factory is always the first parent, and then you get a linear history that ends at the beginning of factory. And that is basically what you see nowadays with OSC log. If you look at a package in, in factory, it's a linear history of what happened in factory. Now in this model, if you want to see what happened in the devil project, you would go into any commit in factory and go to the second parent, and there you have the full history of the package in the devil project. Now, connecting that with the previous Gitway. So if you have the full hello package like before, it would look like this. So in the factory branch, you have a, hi a linear history that uh, when you follow the first parent, and the second parent, you always go into the package. And there you see the, the individual commits for this specific version. That also means you can check out the actual package at any point by just checking out the second parent. In order to not lose any history, the factory branch must be protected in that case, of course. So if you allow force pushes into the factory branch, then you could again alter the history. So this could be done, for example, by doing this on server side. So imagine you, you push your, your own OpenSUSE branch of the package to, to this new OBS thingy. I would just create this factory branch commit for you, and you will not be allowed to revert that at any point in time. So that is the view for one single package. Now what if we do that at the project level? What's a project? It's a, a directory, so a tree, with subdirectories, individual packages. And what we want to keep in a project is individual package tracking. So we can't just randomly merge packages into that. We also need to create some structure. What we also would like to have with, with Git is a single commit ID for any state. Like now in OBS, if Dominic checks in a staging project, it's individual commits on individual packages. You could never revert a staging project. But with, with Git, if you have a commit that says this staging project was checked in, you could actually achieve that, have a single commit for any uh, check-in into factory. So how would you do that? One approach would be the so-called monorepo. And instead of Structuring, uh, merging that randomly again. We have a main branch that has a linear history and refers to the, the trees that are our packages. And those trees in turn actually point to the actual package. The commits point to our factory branch that is in every single package. So now in this model, we have a linear history of the project if we follow the first parent. And at any point in time, like any commit, we can go to the second parent then we end up in the factory branch of the package. So there we have the linear history of the, what happened to the package. And if we go to the second parent in any given package, we again have the full history of the, of the package itself. Now this monorepo is convenient because it's self-contained. So imagine this is factory. You check out factory and you have all the packages, everything that is in factory. However, that's at the same time also the disadvantage of that because factory is 10,000 packages, including big things like the kernel, Chromium, LibreOffice. So it's basically impossible to check out. So this model might work for small distributions, but not at the scale of factory. So somehow, it would be good to disconnect all the commits of individual packages from the actual project, so you can work with the project without having to check out all packages at the same time. And a way to do that would be git submodules. What is git submodules? There's a trick. Before I said trees refer to other trees like subdirectories or blobs, which is actual file content. Now with git submodules, they apply the trick. They allow commits in trees. Normally that doesn't make any sense. 
but is in this case it's just one level of indirection. So the tooling makes sure that if there's a commit in a tree, it pretends that it's actually the tree that is referred to by this commit. So when we use git submodules, we don't have to put all package history in one giant repo. Instead, the project has its own history, its own blobs, which are not in this case, and the packages are separate. Now we can check out all of factory like this. Uh, there is no content, so really easy. Disadvantages, the content is not there, so git by itself would not make sure that this is consistent. Means you could delete a package, the factory branch would be gone, and the project would still refer to that commit. So if that model is used, somehow the server side would need to make sure that you can never delete a package or commit in a package that is actually used in, an, in a project. Also clearly, um, if you ever used Git submodules, uh, the tooling for submodules is quite suboptimal. So it uh, could be really a pain in the ass if, if you get into some inconsistent state. So I think the, the model with submodules, the idea is, is good, but the tooling for sure needs improvement if you want to use it as distribution le at the distribution level. Also this .git modules file that you typically find in there is, is inconvenient. Like imagine this file with 10,000 entries that contains URLs that you don't see the, the forest for all the trees anymore. So um, if we want to use this as at a uh, distribution level, then clearly we need to do something about the tooling. Anyway, um, how would um, actual submission workflow look like? It's also just an idea. So imagine we would store um, factory in, in a repo that is in the project namespace and the package in, let's say, pool. And we want to submit such a package into this project. It could look like this. So the first thing that the system would have to do is filing some kind of pull request. Then something would have to synthesize this factory commit that I talked before in the factory branch. At the same time, the project would have to create a fork and refer to this new uh, commit in this temporary factory branch. So that would be a staging, basically. And then the build system could build that. Once it's done, it has to do a check-in. The check-in would mean that the actual project would just point its head to the staging project. At the same time, this temporary commit in the package itself would have to be made real in, in the factory branch. And then we end up with the, the layout we saw before. So to summarize, I think good native packaging is possible with the with these workflows that I that I showed here. However, the tooling is really crucial. Like the, the existing Git tools are already hard to use. Adding submodules to the mix makes it even harder. So I think we absolutely need support from the hosting solution, especially to keep the like those factory branches and the project in sync, and to have some way to visualize the, how staging works. Um, and it's not a normal pull request anymore because uh, it's not in this PR subdirectory, so, but something else. You may refer to, to a package from several projects. So all of that, I think, requires a custom hosting solution. And so we can't go with GitHub. So that kind of destroys the idea of the whole Git packaging thingy, but it's unavoidable. So. Maybe we can maintain an individual package in GitHub, but in the end, when we want to submit a distribution, I think we need our own that has our special features. Uh, what I didn't cover in this uh, talk, uh, in this thought model yet, is also maintenance. So that requires further investigation, how, how to apply those methods to a, a stable distribution. So the, the whole concept is written down in this document. It's work in progress. Oh, only five minutes left, okay. Um, yeah, so that is basically my talk, and I'm opening the audience for questions. Hi, so in, in uni, um, in OBS, we have one project with multiple packages. So far, so good. But in our upstream Git repo, is 
subfolders in, in, in one big thing. How would this map to what you presented here to submit that into OBS? You mean when, when upstream already contains submodules or something like that? It's not even submodules, it's just subfolders with spec files in, in it, and we're using a, um, a special tool called Tito to, to actually create the um, OBS packages for now, but there is some tweaking involved. Yeah, I mean, the, the question is how would the build system, OBS in this case, find the spec file? So um, obviously uh, the easiest one would be a spec file is top level and the same name as the, the package. But we can come up with some convention. So we have, I don't know, some dist subdirectory where the spec file is in there or some .obs or whatever it is. And if upstream does not follow this model, then you would have to create your own branch, of course, and put your spec file in that. But that, that would be up to the build system to come up with conventions how to do that. Um, thank you, Ludwig. Um, in your proposal, you dismiss the use of tarballs uh, for multiple reasons. Um, obviously, tarballs have certain advantages. They are bootstrapped uh, f with um, auto tools and, um, and whatnot. And this dependency would add uh, to this because I mean, it, it was a valid distribution method to distribute this, the bootstrapped sources. Um, have you considered this? Um, actually, um, going back to versioning the package in the way that you described, except putting the tarball or reference to this uh, into this Git tree without importing the full upstream sources? I mean, this model doesn't exclude that you put the tarball in there. You just need some method like Git LFS or something, so your history doesn't explode. But you could, of course, just keep tarballs in there. The same method would work with that. It's just cutting off the, the history, basically. So you want to support both models, because I know for a fact some packages will fail if we bootstrap them with factory auto tools. I mean, tr the transition is also an open question, but in the current state, for sure, you need to support tarballs. Uh, that would be too much of a change. However, I think Debian automatically imports tarballs, if I'm not wrong, and then you have the history of the tarballs in Git themselves, including the generated files. So you could also work with that. But again, that would be a matter of deciding how we want to transition and whether we would prefer storing tarballs versus unpacking them on server side somehow and, and then synthesizing a Git history from them. Yes, I think like this transition has to be considered uh, because the packages now, are some of them are in tarballs. Um, and but you described a very interesting final state. Um, so interesting, interested to see what, how this ends up. Thank you. Yeah. No more questions? Three, two, one. Then we're done. Thanks. Thanks.